Hey guys, welcome back for another video from TDL DIY. So uh, we're talking about hot water tanks today. And uh, one, we're gonna show you how to drain it because you should be draining it every six months or to one year, it depends on if we're in well water or uh, city water and if you have any other previous uh, filtration systems before that. Um, but always check with your owner's manual for uh, proper recommendation and guidelines for that. Uh, the second thing we're gonna be doing is changing out our anode. Uh, I always think it's a diode for some reason, but it, an anode, basically what it is, it's a metal rod that goes in your tank and it's a sacrificial piece that will get replaced uh, over time uh, because the water and stuff like that will eat away the anode versus eat away uh, and rust out your tank. So this is a sacrificial piece that has to get changed out every three to five years. Again, uh, just look at your user manual to find out recommended uh, maintenance and, and time to exchange that out. So we're gonna be doing both those today. Obviously we have to drain the tank uh, to change the uh, anode out and then uh, we're gonna show you both steps. Now I got my buddy here, Chris, he's gonna give me a hand and uh, cause we just did his and I think mine will go a little bit quicker just for the same simple fact that we've done it once and uh, we know what we're doing and we don't have to solder with mine cause we're gonna be using shark bike fittings so they just push in and should be good to go. We'll find out how that works. All right, first step, uh, turn off your supply. Mine's off right now. And then we should just crack the valve down here, let the water drain. We got this little uh, tank here because you should have a clear line so you can see what kind of uh, uh, sediment you have in your tank. And that should be done every, like I said, six months to one year. So this way we're gonna pour it in here, we're gonna see the sediment build up and just go down our drain so yeah we're just going to let that go and oh that's she's a little dirty and guys you gotta one other thing don't forget this is a uh, hot water so we have to, the other thing you should probably do is just uh, disconnect your uh, hot water, uh, the power, because right now ours is on, but we'll, we'll turn that off real quick. We'll just unplug it. But be careful, it's very hot water, so you want to be careful and protect yourself from burns and stuff like that, so watch out. Watch out, bud. Not that bad. No, yours just gotta be drained down so we can pull the yeah. anode out. But for not having done this in like some years, forever, it's pretty clean. I gotta remember my anode was took on. Yeah. I'm curious to see what yours looks like. So as you can see here, we got a little bit of sediment going on and uh, battery's about to die on this camera. So we will probably pause you guys here in a sec, but as you can see, it's coming out pretty clear. But we're, we're starting to drain the tank now. It will get worse once we get near the bottom and we gotta flush it probably, probably flush it twice. So this is one, we'll fill it up, flush it again. Um, and we'll also change out that uh, anode as well. So. So this water is quite warm, like that pipe is, is pretty warm, so you don't want to put your hand in there and touch it. Second thing is, uh, I don't know, it's hard to see, but right up right up in there, it was the plug for the hot water to start our, because we're running off natural gas here, so that helps starts the flame and get everything running. So we just unplugged it to be safe, and it's not just gonna be running when there's no water in it because we don't want to burn the element out or anything. So uh, we're going to put you guys on pause and get back to you right soon. Alright guys, so we're about, I'm about to do my first cut here. We've let the water drain quite a bit and uh, should be able to cut that without having any more water come in. So we got got our piece on. I'll do it. Cut off room? Yep. 
And then we just tighten this, turn it, tighten it, turn it. Kind of do one hand here. Uh, this way. Nope. This way. This way. I'm not a plumber, so it's going to take me a while. You plumbers are uh, super fast. I mean, I'll go upstairs. There we go. And uh, my buddy said we should be good and trust him this time because last time he was looking at me and thinking, uh, should we do it? I said, I don't know. I'd let all the water drain out first just because I, I wasn't quite sure. And uh, we let her buck this time and she's good to go. So what we'll do since I took a little bit, we're going to uh, we're gonna cut another chunk off maybe about here and we'll get you guys back on camera and we're gonna use this guy here. So for one, this is gonna allow um, us to have a, a hot water shut off right here. And two, this has a, a connection so that we can actually pop it off if need be. You guys can put unions uh, so I was going to use this thing as kind of like a union type thing because we could use this tool and pop it off. Now, if you don't want to use that stuff, you can get the solder on stuff right here. And that's just a ball valve. And we got the union in here somewhere. And this is a union. And, uh, just hold that for a second. Basically what this happens this allows is we can tighten it freely. So once that's solder on, we can we can spin this piece to allow it to, to thread on. And that's how that works. And we can use that so that when you have to do any service, you have it here on your pipe, you undo it, you can pop your pipe off. And you, in this case, we can change our uh, anode line because it's in our hot water supply line. Some of it, there's a separate line and you just unbolt it, bring it up. This one happens to be on our hot water supply line. So this allows us to disconnect and service that item and or uh, maybe remove the hot water tank uh, easily. Now, if you look at the cold water side or even this hot water side right now, they didn't put a union, even though it kind of looks like one, it is soldered on. So I can't unscrew that because it wants to turn the whole pipe. Oh, that's better. Uh, so if I try to unscrew that right now, it's going to want to turn this whole pipe out if we didn't cut this pipe already. Now we cut it, we were able to turn that freely and uh, get to change our anode, which is right here. It's that whole line or change out the hot water tank. So this just allows us to have some flexibility when we have to service the hot water tank uh, for any reason, either replacing it or changing that anode line. So uh, we're going to do a quick other cut and then we'll show you guys when we're throwing the shark bite uh, valve on. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so uh, you guys can kind of see, this is the hot water side. We've cut our pipe the extra like couple inches. We're not gonna put the, the valve on yet. We gotta get this uh, piece off. So we're going to unthread it and unthread this copper piece first and then we'll unthread uh, the anode, pop it up and uh, take a look, see, see the condition. And we're probably just going to replace it anyways, even if, it, even if the condition is okay. Just for the simple fact, it's been seven years, I've never changed it, and you should change it between three and five years. And I've just been, been told this information, so uh, new to me, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I'm going to do that right now. You're going to need a monkey wrench, pipe wrench, whatever you want to call it. Um, and for when we go take the anode out, one thing you might need is uh, some type of pipe on here, or in our case, we have a big metal tube, so should be good. I don't know how much you guys are going to see, but at least uh, you can kind of see what we're, we're kind of doing, and then uh, bring you in for a close-up and show you what happened.
Bring up the big guns. Because mine aren't big enough. I'll show you guys where it would be if you didn't have, uh, if it wasn't in your hot water supply, the anode, because sometimes it's in a different location. And I'll show you guys that after. Alright, we gotta be careful because that uh the pipe gets pretty hot. So you wanna probably let your tank cool prior to doing this, but you'll you'll feel it if <laughs> trust me you'll feel it. But if you uh if you wanna be safe, just let it cool your tank cool for a bit because that pipe's still quite hot. And I'm gonna show you the condition of mine and uh when I actually post this video, I'll get a picture of uh Chris is here, my buddy, and show you the difference between mine and his because his was unreal, uh, the difference. So, and we kind of suspected that after we figured out the reasons and come to our conclusions. Now we're not plumbers or nothing, but this is what we've kind of determined. We figured mine was gonna be full of white calcium buildup. And if that was the case, uh, he did some research saying that if it's full of the white calcium, it's time to replace it. Now his um, was pretty much all gone because he has um, a water softener in his house, so it has filtrations and it uh, introduces a little bit of salt into the water, which obviously uh, eroded and deteriorated that anode rod, and that's its purpose. But I'll show you what mine looks like. So this is what mine looks like, and it's kind of what we figured afterwards, because I don't have the, the water, hard water, soft water thing. So as you can see right down here, it's kind of started eroding the bottom quite a bit. I don't know if it's, it's kind of hard to see, but oh, you can probably see there a bit. It started to erode the bottom, but if it's like this, uh, it's time to replace it. And I'll show you the good rod. So that's what the good rod looks like. Pretty much like mine, don't, 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 just uh, don't touch. Don't without touch the calcium me. buildup. So if I could show you here, don't touch. Don't touch. see that little don't rod in the middle? That's basically what was uh, left with Chris's because he's got that uh, soft water or hard water removal or soft water, whatever, uh, system in his house. And introducing a little bit of salt water, basically all this was gone and it was just that thin little pipe right there, or a piece of metal right there. That was it. And how he knew is because apparently he was uh, filling a bathtub and it basically looked like rusty water. And uh, that's the reason, because it the tube did its job, um, was the sacrificial piece and not rust out the tank and uh it's time for him to replace it so and again his house same as mine same meter and uh it's been about seven years we didn't know about this until uh i guess his failed and we looked into it and that that's the reason why and why you should change it every three to five years uh based on your manufacturer's recommendation so this is uh what the hole looks like there's some uh calcium and stuff build up probably clean that out real quick so this is our hot water side, and that's our cold hot water side, cold water side. And sometimes uh, under this blower, approximately probably right here in the middle, in between the two pipes, uh, there's a different style, which I'll probably get a picture of and put on the screen. Basically, all you have to do is just unwrench it with a big pipe wrench or something, similar to what we did. 
do pretty much what we did here, but it's in a different spot. Pull that rod out and replace it, and that's that's exactly what we're doing right here. It's just it's in a different location. That's the only real difference, and the style looks a little different. So basically, it doesn't have this part. It goes right up to like a threaded nut, and that is it. Like honestly, slight differences, but the result and the out outcome will be more or less the same, different position. So. Uh, my tank is pretty much almost empty. We're gonna put the new one in. We're probably gonna flush the tank one more time, but we'll show you guys putting it in and also getting uh, the shark bite valve fitting on. And then we'll just flush it one more time and we're probably good to go. But uh, you guys don't need to see the flush again. Mm, no. So uh, yeah, we just got through some thread tape on that. Basically it's just uh, white, I don't know what, Type of tape this is maybe not I don't know but this is what it is you can get it for like 50 or 80 cents Home Depot any hardware store like that too easy we're gonna throw this in and uh, get it tightened up it also comes with uh, liquid thread tape on it already so so uh, you can kind of see it right here and uh, got it in, we're just going to tighten it up. Okay, now we're going to put our uh, copper piece on in preparation to get this on. Actually, I could probably put this on right now. So, a shark bite fitting. Pretty simple. Slide it on, push it in all the way, give it a little turn, maybe get it in more, and uh, I think we got it seated. Simple. Just plug and play. Shouldn't be an issue. Simple, just like that, you just slam it in, maybe move your valve a little bit so it kind of wiggles down. And uh, that's the shark bike fitting. We're gonna test it to see uh, how well it actually holds. But we're gonna, before we do that, we're just gonna drain it one more time, fill it up, drain it, and then we'll get back to you in two seconds. I'll bring you in for a close-up and see how it looks. So this is what it looks like all in. It just literally just slides on. It's first time I ever used a shark bite. My neighbor, we just, uh, or uh, Chris here, we used, uh, he soldered his on. It takes a little longer, you can do that, no problem. And he used these fittings right here. So that's the exact setup he used. And uh, I got the exact same thing, but then I said, since we're uh, shooting a video and to save time and to show you guys the shark bite stuff, uh, this is a good way to, to do it. So we're, uh, we're just gonna leave it like that for now. I'm gonna flush the tank and uh, I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. So we just opened up the cold water. As you can hear, it's rushing through and uh, we've just closed our valve, the drain valve over here. It's hard to see, but where my finger is, that's the drain valve. We close that off, open the cold water, so now it's gonna fill the tank up. As you can hear, water's rushing through. Uh, make sure if we did open the, the pressure relief valve, make sure that's closed, and it's just gonna fill our hot water tank. And then after we get it full or we hear less uh, water noise, we're gonna open the hot water and check for any leaks. Oh, Dad, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Dad, why is it not coming up? No, we're not doing that one. So, uh, if your anode was not connected to your hot water line and it was under your uh, motor there, you don't have to. Basically, you, you won't have to put um, do anything with your hot water line and, 
and put a, a valve on it if you didn't want to. You can always put a valve on if you want. And same with um, the union joint. You can do it as well, but you don't have to because then your service is now the anode that is separate versus the anode that's part of your hot water line. So the reason why I did it this, this way or uh, the way I explained earlier is uh, because the anode is part of a hot water line and it allows us to service it in the future. For that also being said, you can also do these modifications to your hot water line and your cold water line with uh, either, well the cold water line there's a valve already, you can add a valve on your hot water line and you can add a union if you like just so if you have to in the future you can easily take off your hot water tank and, and replace it. But hot water tanks should be good for uh, I'm not quite sure but at least 10 years if not uh, significantly longer 15 maybe even 20 years but at, at the point where you hit 20 years guys uh, technology has changed there's probably more energy efficient ones and uh, it's probably time to replace them but for all you people out there that haven't <laughs> never drained your hot water tank you know you, you want to do that at least once a year at least once a year um, potentially every six six months. I haven't done it for seven years since I moved in and I didn't get that much sediment out of it. That being said, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing it. Just to flush it out, it doesn't take that much. It's less than filling up a bathtub. Just uh, drain it, flush it out, then you make sure that all that sediment and other uh, buildup isn't in your tank corroding it and uh, doing anything harmful. So just get it out of there, it's easy doesn't take too much. So we've just opened the hot water valve here uh, to here and see. You'll be able to see probably some bubbles in the line. It's gonna be uh, a little bit hard to see here. But that's what you look for and you'll see probably the water level go up and we'll also at the same time check for uh, any leaks. So far as you can hear the water, we don't hear the water noise so much so the water's probably coming up in the tank and we should be pretty much done. Done. That's it. So we got no leaks. You want to feel around there for any leaks or anything. Nothing. And you can turn your uh, turn it off. Turn it on. If you don't hear any rush of water going through then uh, your, your water lines are probably already full of water and should be good to go. And just uh, you know, for safety, just keep an eye on it for about a day or so. Make sure that there's no small leaks that came through. And uh, it's really that easy, guys. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we got lots more content on uh, house renovations and different things around the house, uh, along with uh, cars and uh, drift trikes. And we, we do all sorts of things. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I really, uh, really appreciate it. And consider uh, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, never stop learning. Never stop learning. I said that too. What do you say? I said never stop learning. Okay. All right, guys. So hopefully the lighting's not too bad. So this is a different style anode. I'll kind of pop it out. Show you guys. Okay, different style anode. Mine was in the hot water uh, line. This one is separate, as you can see. And when I was in Home Depot, I'll show you some other spots where it could be because they're in different spots. But if you're lucky enough to have one like this, where it's not part of your uh, hot water hot water line, uh, then I don't know if they're all the same, but this is a one one. One and one sixteenth inch uh, socket, and you use a breaker bar with it because it will be on very, very, very well. So this is a breaker bar. I think it's like two feet or something like that. So you just put this guy on, loosen it. I know this is. It's easier to move the socket than it is the, the wrench, but yeah, we're just uh, going one-handed right now, so we can put you guys somewhere. There, that might be better.
So I want to basically take this guy out. We want to, I want to measure it. And then we'll go try and find a replacement. Home Depot carries them. But Home Depot, when I was in the, in the store that I was at, now every store is a little different and they carry different products based on uh, consumer consumption, I guess. So if they sell a lot of it or different types, then they'll probably carry more. Um, so there's that. So what we're, what we're going to do is get the measurement. We'll probably set it back inside. And then we're going to go and either look at Home Depot, see which one's in stock. I think there was only one a certain length, and it probably is to the, their exact water heaters they sell there. Um, if not, then we're going to probably call um, a local place that carries this kind of stuff, where where I got mine from. I don't know how to say the name properly because I'm really bad at pronunciating names, but uh, I will put it on the screen somewhere. So. And those are, at least guys in Edmonton, I don't know if they're uh, a bigger company that's countrywide or worldwide or, or whatever, but I will put their, their website. So yeah, this is a kind of, at least it's easy with uh, having a socket and a breaker bar, but there's its... Now, there's probably a little bit of pressure in there, which we probably just released. It's going to be probably a little bit hot. Oh, as you can see, this hasn't been changed in quite some time. Can I get it all the way out? There we go. So that looks fairly short, but if it's in the tank, it's probably, I don't know, 60% of the way. All right, so that's what it is. We're going to measure this up and uh, see if we can find one like it. But as you can see, this has been very corroded and probably has quite a bit of sediment at the bottom of the tank. I can try and zoom out a bit. Get you a full, full size picture. It's not very high, but as you can see, it's eaten away at a lot of this uh, metal. So it's quite corroded. It is definitely time to change this out. So we will. And we will uh, make sure we get a new one in and uh, we're going to do some research, get a measurement off this and we'll get back to you guys uh, once we got the new one and we'll put it in. Alright guys, so I'll take it from this side. So this will the old one is about 28 and 6 eighths, no, 7 eighths, yeah, 28 and 7 eighths, this one is, the new one's 32 inches, um, so I know we're, we're like 3 inches different maybe, uh, pretty close, so this one is just falling apart, like I touch it and just crumbles, and that'll be some of the sediment in the tank. So we got the new one. What I'm going to do is uh, get some thread tape on that real quick and we'll pop that bad boy back in and screw it in. This is our little uh, cover. Just pop that guy back on. That's it. It's too easy. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna probably blend this in with the the other video just to give you an idea of what uh, both of them are gonna look like. All the maintenance is for this one is right here for that anode, and really just flushing the hot water tank out. 
So, yeah, that's it. That's all. Thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget, never stop learning.